All right, welcome back to Fast Gadgets. So what I'm going to talk about today is how to install a Linux dual boot with Windows 10 already present on the Lenovo Yoga 910. So I want to emphasize that we already have Windows 10 installed, came installed with the system, and what we need to do is create a dual boot environment and it does take quite a few steps in a very specific order and if you are to change the order it probably will not work so follow these strictly and you should be just fine and can you use different versions of Linux to do this particular uh, dual boot setup on the Yogo 910 probably I would say the first I don't know 10 or so steps and I'll go over that yes you definitely could do that uh, I'm sure it would work just fine with any version of Linux and you would have a dual boot system so the very first thing that we have to do is to set up uh, partition space in Windows and what I did was boot it into Windows and I went into disk management and I selected my C drive and then I have an option if I click the correct partition which is my main Windows NTFS partition if I right click it I can do shrink volume and I shrunk the volume about 50 percent so I wanted half left for Windows and half left for Linux so this is a 512 gigabyte SSD so I went ahead and shrunk it to approximately 256 gigabytes each give or take so then before we log out of Windows and this is very important I'm gonna run CMD so I wanna go into the command line and I need to right click it so you have to right click the command and run it as admin that's very important then I type in BCD edit space slash set squiggly bracket current squiggly bracket and you'll know what I mean I'll put it up on the screen space safe boot all one word space minimal and this command is critical because it's what it's going to do is it's going to allow me to um, request that Windows install the AHCI drivers which it will be required for us to be able to uh, boot into Windows and Linux now by default the Yoga 910 uses the Intel RST drivers which is kinda like a fake software rate and I've heard that performance wise it makes almost no difference so if you want to do dual boot into Linux you need to go to the AHCI drivers and the thing about it is uh, if you simply switch it in the BIOS first you will not be able to boot into Windows you'll get an inaccessible boot device and the only easy way to fix that is to reinstall Windows and I did not want to do a reinstall so I wanted this as easy as possible so after you enter that command you can do one of two things you can click restart while you hold the shift key when the boot menu comes up select troubleshoot and after you select troubleshoot on the next menu select advanced options and after that menu select UEFI firmware settings and then click restart now if you don't want to go through all those steps you could uh, simply shut down and then use the Novo button on the side press the Novo button and go into the UEFI firmware settings it's very important that you don't let Windows boot back up again well not very important I mean if you did it's no big deal probably it would be okay uh, but you, you want to try and avoid that so once we've done that we want to go into the BIOS and change some UEFI settings so there's a couple that are specific that I change now you'll see why when I go through them the first one is I change the boot so I go to the uh, boot option on the menu 
and I change fast boot to disabled and we need this to be disabled so that we can boot to other media like USB then go to configuration and we want to change the SATA controller mode from Intel RST to AHCI then in the same area change Intel virtual technology to enabled this has nothing to do with um, getting dual boot set up this actually is useful if you want to run vir virtual machines in 64-bit mode which I definitely do so this isn't a required step but I'm recommending it then go to the security category and again you may not need to do this you know grub 2 should be able to cover this but if you want to ensure that dual boot is going to work for me it was just a easiest thing to do change secure boot to disabled so exit and make absolutely sure you're saving the changes now the first time I did this ominously enough none of the setting changes were actually saved so what I did was save the changes the second time power the unit off use the Novo button and go back and just confirm that they were actually saved because if you go into the next steps and those settings were not saved in your BIOS you're wasting a lot of time okay so then we're gonna boot into Windows as usual and you may see a message saying that it's updating some drivers which is probably where it's installing the AHCI drivers it may reboot you may see the Lenovo uh, screen that comes up on these Yoga 910s come up and then it reboot and then come up and reboot again a couple times so don't be concerned if you see that eventually it's going to get back into Windows once Windows has booted up we need to enter another command and what we're gonna do is we're gonna run CMD again and we're gonna right click and ensure that we run it as admin and we're going to issue the BCD edit space forward slash delete value space squiggly bracket current squiggly bracket space all one word safe boot. So that's BCD edit slash delete value bracket current bracket space safe boot. Now here's my recommendation. You probably don't have to do this, but I would recommend um, rebooting again and ensuring that you are able to log into Windows with the AHCI driver. You just want to make sure. After you've done that, put your bootable USB media into the USB port. Um, and you're going to go ahead and you got a couple of choices. I did held down shift and rebooted the computer and went through the bio settings you can just as easily shut it down and use the Novo button just so you know um, it's this system is so fickle about booting correctly with the uh, USB in so I had the best luck by using the Novo button so you could just shut down Windows press the Novo button and once the system comes back up select boot menu then you should see your bootable USB appearing there. Um, if it doesn't, power the system down again, and you could take the USB drive out and put it back in. I'm not sure that really helps, but use the Novo button again and power it back up. For some reason, every once in a while it doesn't recognize uh, the USB bootable media. And from that point on, you boot into Fedora as normally so I had the live USB and once I booted into Fedora uh, I went ahead and ran the installation process I had half the drive available so I went ahead and did that um, test by booting into Linux make sure once the installation is completed do the reboot you should see the grub uh, boot menu as usual test Linux test Windows when you go back into Linux in order to get Wi-Fi working which you'll need if you want to be able to do the updates uh, run the command sudo space modprobe space dash r 
space idea pad underscore laptop and that'll just temporarily blacklist idea pad laptop and after you run the updates from thereafter everything is as usual with the installation so pretty straightforward um, I had no problems it took me a while to figure it out and, and I was really confused when the bio settings did not take correctly and I had to go back and set them again and then I had to change the um, uh, boot driver to Intel RST again so I could get into Windows so I could run the BCD edit command again and all that stuff so if you make sure your BIOS settings are fine this should work out great for you and you should have a dual boot ready to go in no time at all thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time on fast gadgets <laughs>